We're back. We're live here on Think Tank with Likeable Science on a Friday afternoon, uh, our 2 o'clock rock. And, of course, uh, the host and our chief scientist is uh, Ethan Allen, and he's here to help us with uh, scientific questions. But let me preface that by saying, you know, it was only a few weeks ago when I personally learned about, uh, about uh, what's it called, the special carbon. Graphene. Graphene. Okay, we're entitling the show Not Your Daddy's Carbon. This is different. <laughs> And, and the preface in this is we learned about this at the Verge, uh, at the Verge Energy Conference uh, two, three weeks ago, um, because there was uh, some commentary about it in one of the panels. Uh, and it's really remarkable. It's a new battery. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been talking and thinking about batteries for five years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the key to the grid. It's the key to clean energy. You can't do solar at night. Wind doesn't work quite as well at night. Uh, all these renewables, you know, have their ups and downs, but I can say, uh, so if you have batteries, you smooth the curve and you make it dispatchable. Everything gets to be dispatchable energy. Really important. But batteries are expensive. Storage is expensive. Everyone talks about storage and everyone recognizes these problems, both in cost, efficiency, you know, uh, sustainability and long, long life and all that. And so current batteries, people are willing to live with them, you know, and sort of plan around them. But we need something better. And I've always said that the guy who invents a better battery is going to make Bill Gates look like a piker. <laughs> well, now it's interesting, Jay, because they, they just have come up with this group, just came up with a, essentially an artificial leaf, literally a device. It's a sort of a biological, uh, mechanical, electrical cell that can take, run on, off of sunlight, literally pulls carbon dioxide out of the air and turns it into essentially a usable fuel. Whoa, there's I mean, another it, one. It, it bypasses batteries entirely. It, just, it produces fuel directly from sunlight, you know, just like plants do. You know, the uh, energy is the technology that technology mm -hmm. was supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> and, we, and we have this corner on the market of mm -hmm. renewables. We have wonderful environments, right. you know, wonderful renewable so resources all around us. Mm -hmm. and we are, I hope we can realize the destiny of being a laboratory for the world right here in Hawaii. What, a, what a great, wonderful break it is. And it's, it's enhanced, greatly enhanced, by these new technologies. They're coming soon. Uh, they're coming out of the best, uh, you know, uh, research minds in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, Bill Gates will look like a, like a biker. <laughs> so let's talk about both devices. But let's start with graphene, okay? Sure. What, what is it? What is, how does it work? And why can it do these remarkable things? And why didn't we figure it out earlier? <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's been around forever, basically. Okay. But graphene is simply carbon. Now, you know carbon in the form of charcoal, right? This sort of soft, black, crumbly stuff. When right? I was a kid, I had gra graphite in my pencil. Right, right. That's a different so. <laughs> form. And then there's diamonds, right, which are also just carbon. All those things are just carbon. And it's how those carbon atoms get put together in different forms that make, make the, the material so radically different. So we now have the nanotechnology that can enable us to put them together in different forms, right? Right. We can, we can now build structures much more in a controlled manner than we used to be able to. Yeah. So in a diamond, all the carbon atoms are, are locked in a three-dimensional matrix, each one linking to atoms above, below, beside it, in a perfect matrix where every carbon atom is linked to four others. And, it's and, a picture. Is this, uh, is this no, what you're this, talking no, about? No, this is graphene. So in some... Uh, the more familiar form, the, the graphite in your pencil, you know, that you talked about, is sheets of carbon atoms, quite a bit like this, only loosely linked to other sheets. So it's, it's, most of its bonds are all in the horizontal plane, like these planes up behind us in the, in the background here. There's a lot of different planes. Right, but, but there's lots and lots and lots of them stacked together, just loosely bonded together. And that's why graphite is such a good lubricant, because these, these sheets slide. will slide easily on one another. And so some of it sticks to one surface, some sticks to another surface, and then your surfaces slide very easily. Now, what, and see, it seems sort of amazing, but people didn't realize, of course, there should be a way to get one of those sheets off, right? And it turns out that way is, is actually pretty simple. If you take some, graph, some graphite, like I'm doing here, and make a nice heavy layer of graphite here. So there's a lot of, a lot of these sheets of carbon atoms sitting there, right? And then I take a piece of scotch tape, and I put it down here on the graphite, and I pick it up. What do you see there? Can the camera see that? I don't know if we can zoom in close enough. It's a little tiny. Mm -hmm. ah, oh, that's 
what technology? Yeah. yeah. So See, that looks like um, right, yeah. just Let, a, a smattering of carbon stuff. Right. And actually what you're seeing there are probably thousands of layers of graphene. And it's where you're not really seeing anything there that you actually probably have single layers of graphene. There are places on this tape where single layers are stuck. Yeah. And the, a few years ago, basically, people figured this out, that you can do this, literally almost this technique and then essentially carefully wash your tape away from this and you're left with these single layers of graphene, these single sheets, like these, again, these hills behind us, so these single sh undulating sheets of carbon atoms, all linked to other carbon atoms. Single one, layer of one, atoms. One atom thick. That's what I call nanotechnology. It, it is. It's really thin. And it's this, it's exactly, it's well put, Jay, because it's that change in scale by making, by having a material who has essentially zero thickness, <laughs> the properties of carbon are very different than they are in charcoal or in diamond, right? Every carbon atom, if you think about this, every carbon atom in a graphene sheet is exposed on two sides to the environment. I and mean, that's, a, that's a huge exposure, and there's all kinds of ways it can bond, all kinds of chances for things to react with it. It's a very different material now. Is it porous? It, it is. It's, it's a set of little hexagons as, as the, the image. Let's uh, go back to the image for a minute. So uh, you, the right. image shows us uh, those the, the those atoms are connected. Are those balls, each one linking to, to three other uh, carbon atoms, basically. Each ball is an atom. Right. Yeah, yeah. and the, the little sticks there are the, are the bonds holding them together, and they form these vast sheets. And so and they, something can happen. It, it's porous in the sense that something can go through within those bonds. Within the spaces in between, there is some room, yeah, yeah. and or you can you can drop other things into that network basically and create your own control size pores if you want of, of a different size. Is is the sheet of carbon atoms strong? It's incredibly strong. Really, these it, bonds are done very well. Right, then. Yes, carbon bonds very effectively to itself forms nice, stable, strong bonds. They have calculated one of the most stable elements on the periodic table. Isn't exactly, it? it's very stable. It's, it's underlies all life forms, every virtually every biological molecule. And it's is everywhere, and it is. It's, it's ubiquitous. You yes. can find it without hardly looking. Right. Okay. So you were asking on its strength. Here's a beautiful example. The guys who got the Nobel Prize calculated this. They said if you took a square meter, essentially a square yard of a graphene sheet, one atom thick, mind you. First off, that would weigh next to nothing. It would weigh less than a milligram, less than a thousandth of a gram. That's less than one one thousandth of a percent the weight of a piece of paper of that size. And yet it could support, as they say, a cat. Huh. It weighing, while weighing less than the cat's whiskers, that sheet would support a cat. A cat. Yeah. Oh. One atom thick. You know, <laughs> That's pretty strong. It's incredibly strong stuff, you know. How about a big cat? Really big. <laughs> Yeah, why, did, why did they pick a cat? Why not a dog? I, 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 How about I, a little puppy I think, dog? I think it's because it's a Schrodinger's cat, right? You know, okay. you know, a cat that is alive and dead we at the same time. We all wear our hearts right. and our coat sleeves, yeah. <laughs> but so, and furthermore, being only one atom thick, this, uh, this two-dimensionality gives graphene some very interesting properties, right? It's, it's this material, but instead of being three-dimensional, it's only really two-dimensional. Yes. And right. that makes it different. Yes. The two dimensionality. Of right, it. right. The fact that it doesn't have that third dimension to and it. You can it work with it. You can control it. You can focus it that right. way. Yeah. And now they do all kinds of things. This, this diagram that's on here now shows that they, they realize, of course, it can curve up, and, and the material scientists now roll it into tubes, either single wall tubes uh -huh. that are just one layer, and then you can stick other things down the middle of that tube. Ah. Or you can loop it around, sort of spiral up and have multi-layer. They have the technology to do that, to bend yes. it that way? In, in controlled ways now. So you can ah. build single wall nanotubes, multi-wall nanotubes. Who's working on this? 20,000 material scientists across Is the country, right? I'm sure. They're all excited. They all oh. want to be like Bill Gates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff. The battery people are just one small facet of it. Um, ah. They've got now, I think, uh, I think uh, one of the newest uh, uh, smartphones has come out with a graphene-based touchscreen now. Uh, I mean, it's starting to really get into the market in a big way. So big what, sort what of are the properties in terms of conducting electricity so, so and being a touchscreen? It, so it's quite conductive. It, it, yeah. it has very good thermal conductivity, very good electrical conductivity. Yeah. Yeah. I, you can, you can, so, so it's yeah. more than batteries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Batteries are just sort of one little piece of this stuff. It's the strength that we care about well, and it's, the, it's, the it's malleability. Just, it's, it's this weird combination of properties, yeah. yeah. And then you, as you 
you can start what they call doping it, you know, sticking other atoms into the middle of it and begin to change those properties in very interesting ways. GMO atoms. <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. But, but you know, what you suggest, though, is that carbon is one element on the periodic table, right. but there might be other elements, too, that are also stable, mm -hmm. where we could do similar things. Am I right? Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's always actually been this big question is, why carbon? Yeah. Why, why is everything, all life forms, based around carbon? And there are, have been speculations about a silicon-based life form. And shouldn't there be a silicon-based life form? And may, th may there be somewhere else in the universe yeah. silicon-based uh, silicon life Mars. forms? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and how would they be the same and how would they be different? Because silicon is, of course, very close to carbon on, on the periodic table yeah, and has yeah. very similar properties. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what's the, what's the uh, abbreviation for carbon? C. C. Yeah. C. And silicon? Uh, SI. SI. Right. I knew that. Yeah. 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 yeah takes me back. <laughs> That's not like CSI. <laughs> okay, so what, you know, uh, I think we should talk about all possible uses, and I certainly, I mean, it's an important point that this is not the only use of mm -hmm. batteries, but just hypothetically, um, if it was an important use for mm -hmm. humankind, mm -hmm. how, how would it work? How do you take the technology, the science that's been developed by these 20,000 researchers and move it into, you know, commercial utilization? Well, now, no one really knows what, how it's ultimately going to be used, but yes, it's going to find its way into electronics and all sorts and types and, and ways. I uh, probably will, will become ubiquitous in the electronics industry. Uh, certainly in the, uh, for, for batteries, it may get, it finds its way into these, you, you were speaking the importance of batteries earlier, but, but these things now, the ultra capacitors, so the, yeah. the problem with batteries is, of course, they can store a lot of energy, but they can't deliver energy very fast. It sort of trickles out of them, right? Yeah. Capacitors can store a whole lot of energy, release it all in a big burst, but they yeah. don't last very long. Yeah. Probably using graphene, you can build a super capacitor, a capacitor that will be able to burst out a, power. and high-speed battery. And then be able to still feed you power for a long time after that and send off bursts periodically, you know. Let's take a burst for a minute and take a break. <laughs> burst break, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ethan Allen. We'll be right back. You'll see. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on Think Tech's show. Sorry. Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna and I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I invite you to come watch our show on thinktechhawaii.com. You can also see our shows on YouTube as well if you can Google search those. I appreciate the time. I hope that you do join us as we learn about education, about the educational system here in Hawaii, what the challenges are, what the benefits are, and how much our kids are learning. So thank you. I hope you join us. We're back. So these guys, these 20,000 scientists, <laughs> most of them I'm sure are talking to each other and, and they're probably, you know, they're probably working all over the world too. Uh, understand about the lattice work. They can create that carbon lattice work, the one atom thick. Uh, they can curve it and turn it and make it into tubes maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and that, this all suggests because of the high conductivity and the supercapacitor po possibility, uh, that they can make super fast batteries. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so what will it take, Ethan? Uh, what will it take to get there? Well, r right now it's, it's still hard to make very big uh, amounts of it. Although, actually, the carbon nanotubes, they are now producing in multi-ton lots. And if you think these are things made out of one atom thick stuff. Uh, multi-ton lots? Where, yes. Where a, That's a, a lot of sheets. Yes. Where a, a, a uh, three foot by three foot sheet will weigh less than a thousand, a thousandth of a gram, and they're producing this stuff in ton, multi-ton lots. Can I hold it like that? Yeah, Can I mean, they, they, are, they are beginning to get it in, in bigger forms, more usable. Can, can I see through it? Yes, it's quite, it's quite transparent, it's actually. Transparent, yeah. wow. It's only one atom thick. You know, it's and not I, really and how big are the sheets? I mean, could it be I don't, I don't know how big they can now make them. I don't a know if they can make a... a bread box? What is I it? don't know if they can now make a, a one meter by one meter sheet. I'm, yeah, I, okay. I'm, I'm guessing not, but I don't really know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's a very rapidly changing technology. So how do you lay one sheet on top of the other? Physically? 
You just take one sheet, put the on you, top. You, you can do that. Top, yeah. And um, then take a scissors, like you know, a scissors, and you cut it. <laughs> this is all like arts and crafts here, with, with the, the scotch tape and now the scissors. <laughs> and but how do you put the energy into it? Well, I mean, that's yes. You have to have a connection from some power source into it, basically, but move through probably some more standard conductor. Uh, you know, yeah. plugged into the grid somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, that's probably something they got to research also. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, you want to. You a little that. thing that connects on the side right. of a bunch of these sheets, and then I mean there must be all kinds of tricks, tricks and best practices kind of to make this work. But so you you put something on the side that clamps down on the sheets and has contact with with mm -hmm. every sheet somehow, and then you feed a little tiny bit of electricity into that, mm -hmm. and then the sheets hold the electricity. One sheet alone, right? could hold some electricity, but if you put a whole stack of them together, they're going to hold a lot more. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't actually know enough about making batteries to understand exactly how you'd have to do it. I suspect you'd, you'd end up separating your sheets, again, having something molecularly that sits on, some molecules that sit sort of on top of each sheet and keep the sheets slightly apart, yeah. so insulated from one another. Yeah. And you do it's some, a matrix. Some, some, yes, yeah. some three-dimensional stack, basically, of, of these sheets okay. to, to begin to do it. But, but uh, you know, beyond that, I mean, you're getting way out into obscure. So, uh, now I heard it said that these sheets, these, this device, this, this, this science could power a cell phone for mm -hmm. a week or two or three. Um, that means you could do it very small. You can make yeah. a very small battery, smaller than what we, and oh, yeah. lighter than what we have now. Right, yeah, yeah. But I mean, of course, uh, uh, sort of related to this is, is that the big thing now they're starting to work on is this so-called uh, piezoelectronic stuff where as you move, you'll have stuff woven into your clothing, where as you move, you'll, you'll be producing p electrical power from the, the wrinkling and unwrinkling of your clothing. Uh, will actually be producing small amounts of electrical power, which can feed your devices. So your cell phone will be like just clipped to your shirt, and will be constantly recharging off your shirt. Can I wash this clothing? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It'll be, it'll be. In fact, it's indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold cats with it. <laughs> well, this is, this is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's like we don't know the boundaries for this science yet. Right. No. I mean, there's the. There are all kinds of interesting pluses, and of course there are, there are the hazards. People worry about what are the health impacts of this stuff. What are the health impacts? Well, as far as people know, basically, again, carbon pretty much is stable, more, more or less okay. It's not really a harmful substance, but the problem is, again, you get, if you've got, let us just imagine you have some of these little carbon nanotubes rolled up, yeah. and little tiny chunks of them, say, a micron long, so, you know, a, 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 a thousand nanometers long. Yeah. Those ma would make a sort of fine dust that you could inhale, and then they're like coal dust. Yeah, then they're deep and in your lungs, be so good and, for your might, lungs. and it might not be good for your lungs, and, it, and they might be sharp enough they slip through and get into your circulation. Then, yeah. so there's a whole bunch of unknowns. So we'd have to seal the battery. Yeah, we, could, we couldn't let the, these these sheets live. You know, you know, people open. People like, do already. I mean, if, if they're producing ton lots of this stuff, you know, there's a lot of it spilling around all over yeah. the, the atmosphere at this point. Huh? And this is so far. It must be sort of expensive for these researchers to right. make a, a big sheet. Yes, of exactly. Carbon atoms. Exactly. Right. And but again, the, the price is just you know crashing down all the time as they're, they're getting better and better control over the processes now. But am I right to say that so far nobody has actually made a battery out of out of. Uh, uh, Graphene. I don't think anyone's made any working commercial battery out of it. Yes, uh, I suspect they, people have made little laboratory prototypes. But yeah, yeah, with proof of concept, right. so that they actually can. Do exactly, it. exactly. So, yeah. well, <clears throat> I mean, you know, so this is worth researching to see what companies mm -hmm. are actually involved in that research. Yeah, and see see if you can make a buck with that. Oh, you know, I'm I'm sure there are a dozen companies investing hundreds of millions of dollars each year at this point, yeah. uh, basically, uh, because the, the market is just. Patents, and the processes, yeah, exactly. and the configuration, all that. Right. So you got tele cell phones, that's mm -hmm. easy. Right. But what about all the other batteries that we need for the grid, for renewables going forward? This would be so disruptive. It would, be t would take us to a, a whole new world of energy, um, and it would change the, the pace at which we develop renewable energy. Right. It would make fossil fuel irrelevant. Yeah. Well, this is, this is what this the thing I mentioned is artificial leaf. People have looked at this and said, this is really disruptive technology. The, the, for one, the, the materials they, the guys did this with are cheap. 
just dirt cheap common stuff, basically. There's nothing fancy. I think the fanciest thing is a, is a tungsten compound, and tungsten's basically pretty easy to get a hold of. Yeah. And it, it's T. Yes. No, on actually, on the periodic table? Actually, it's W. But w, sorry. For Wolfram. <laughs> tungsten is W on the periodic table. Okay. <laughs> but <clears throat> anyhow, um, so yeah, uh, that's going to really, if suddenly you don't need, you, you have essentially a cheap way to turn sunlight into liquid fuel, more or less directly. Uh, then so what, what? So how, just give me a, 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 a just a general idea of how that works. Sunlight comes in. It, it works very much like an artificial leaf, like a plant. Like a leaf, leaf. yes, like, it, like it, with it, chlorophyll it, and right, all that. Right, it, it's sucking up some water and pulling in carbon dioxide out of the air, and then stringing the carbon dioxide and, and the hydrogen molecules and some of the oxygen molecules all together, and making a big hydrocarbon molecule. The, what kind of fuel do we get out of it? Don't say oil. Well, no, but essentially a precursor of, of oil, of, you know, some, some basic hydrocarbon that, that's fundamentally... That you can burn. Oil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're back to square one in terms of, uh, right. you know... But now you're sucking <laughs> the, the CO2 out of the air to make this stuff, you know. <laughs> when you burn it, you put CO2 so back, back in, in so it's a balance. Right, exactly, exactly. You know. <laughs> it's like it's, oil, but it only, it's done instantly instead of over thousands of years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's... Uh, Who's working on this? Uh, it's right now just just in the laboratory stage, but but it's just just came out uh, uh, really this I think this week in Science. Uh, if the, the article finally just got published, I've been hearing a little bit about this for a few weeks. But the Science, the, the, the journal, journal Science, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, and it does it at a, at a reasonably, I forget what the figure was, but it's something like 10% efficiency. I mean, it's, it's really it's better than plants do it. Plants operate typically at 3 maybe 5% their most yeah. efficiency. And this already is at 10% in the prototype stage, and one suspects they'll make it a lot better. And, and that's way better than a solar cell, but you've got to have the device to actually burn the fuel. Well, yeah, but and, and change that into electricity. Right, but that's the, the the beauty of it, though. It's sort of like a battery. I mean, you're getting you're getting something out of it that you don't need the sun anymore. You know, you, yes, it right. just keeps making it more and more fuel for you when perpetual. it is sunny. It's perpetual. Yeah, with yeah. no effort. Yeah, you don't have to put anything in. Well, really. sunlight. Yeah, you know, sunlight. It, it's no. just harvesting sunlight again, that. and that's yeah. I mean, that's what we have. We have plenty of pouring in on this earth. You know. Um, God, we should all be alive and stay alive long enough to enjoy the incredible benefits. You know, it's, it's not just that this will replace fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. It's that when we fix these, when we you know, fully realize these technologies, um, we will be able to use renewables and deliver energy more efficiently and cheaper than ever before. Exactly. And I think the axiom is clear that if you can get cheap electricity, you have a better civilization. Yeah, if you, if, if you make energy plentiful, readily available, and inexpensive for everyone, things just thrive. People, th people thrive. They've got you know, lights at night. They can, you can, so you can stay up, you can read, you, know, you can cook your food, you can clean your water, you, know, you can desalinate water if need be. I mean, it's just suddenly the, the world is your oyster, yeah. It's, so, yeah. no, I mean, I agree. You're, you're, uh, the pe people who build a better battery or basically figure out a better energy source well, let me ask. I mean, suppose we have graphene everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't know if it gives off heat. Maybe it does. Graphene we don't know that se. for sure. Hmm? Not, not as a, not as a, I mean, a sheet no, of graphene. It's just, no, it's just, just a battery. But batteries oh. can get hot. Yes. You know? uh, and I don't know whether these graphene batteries would, would generate. Maybe, maybe it's a better, you know, better combination than, than a regular, you know, lead acid battery. Well, I don't anyway, but what, what if, you, if I give you a world with graphene? A world where every cell phone, every small device, every power station, every solar uh, installation on every home is all, you know, covered by batteries using graphene. What, what effect do you think there would be sort of, um, you know, on the environment, on climate change, on our lives together? Yeah, I mean, what, what you're talking about is, is essentially uh, a way of really reducing the carbon footprint effectively to zero for, for civilizations. And then, then we can really actually have some hope of, of sort of stopping the incredible trajectory we're, we're on with our unfortunate geoengineering experiments that we're, we're doing as a civilization to this planet. <laughs> <laughs> Accidental geophysical yeah, engineering. Well, yeah, exactly. Lar large scale experiments with no clue about the, the variables involved. You know? I've been reading a book called Pacific um, by Simon Winchester, who used to be with the uh, East-West Center. And one of the stories is uh, the U.S.'s adventures. Uh, and 
incidental experiments with the hydrogen bomb in, mm -hmm. in you know, your area of the Western sure. Pacific, and it's terrible what we did. Oh. We, have to, we have to do better. This could be doing better. This could change the world. And we should all live long enough to uh, have it and, um, you know, and enjoy the benefits of it. And I want to be around. I want to follow it with you. I want to follow it with Excellent. you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I look forward to exploring it further with you, Jay. Yeah. Keep 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 in touch with it, and you know, check it out in the journal Science and elsewhere. And we do. That's uh, that's <laughs> Ethan Allen. He's our chief scientist, and he's also the host of this show, Likeable <laughs> Science. And we've been talking about graphene and and the new leaf. What do you call that? Yeah. This is, the new leaf. Artificial leaf. Not a car. <laughs> it's an artificial leaf that makes fuel. We're going to talk more about this. We're going to cover these stories going forward. Thanks for watching. Aloha. Aloha.